What is happening all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Nearman Condition. And today I'm going to be doing an overview of some trade paperbacks from Marvel Comics coming out on December 2nd. So please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Before we get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these books. These books are due out in the direct market on December 2nd and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to kick it off with New Mutants Volume 1. So this might be a little confusing, but I'll explain. So here we have New Mutants Volume 1. And you're probably asking yourself a pretty legit question. Then we already have a New Mutants Volume 1 from the Dawn of X era. And we did right here. And this is where it can be a little confusing because this is New Mutants by Jonathan Hickman, Volume 1, and then this is New Mutants by Ed Brisson, Volume 1. But nowhere on the title on the book does it say that. So they're both labeled as Volume 1. It's pretty interesting that the Ed Brisson one it has a little orange tint to the color, though. So this right here, and this is where I'll explain, this collects issues 1 and 2 and 5 and 7 of... New Mutants, the Dawn of X era. These are the ones that are written by Jonathan Hickman where the X-Men, or these New Mutants rather, go to space. The remaining New Mutants at Brison's run are collected right here. Now, to clarify, again, here's the contents. Issues 3 and 4, 6, 8 through 12. So this is the remaining issues of New Mutants. Now let's go ahead and get started. So that's what separates these two. And whenever you're shopping online, one is labeled New Mutants Volume 1 by Jonathan Hickman, and then this one here is labeled New Mutants by Ed Brisson. So, not to spoil anything, but I'm sure most of you all know that there is a new era of X-Men. It all takes place on Krakoa, where mutants are living in this utopia, and they're inviting every mutant across the globe. However, not every mutant has joined, so it's up to Armor and Glob Herman and a couple of other mutants, new mutants, as well as Boom Boom of all people to go and get some of these characters, such as Beak and Angel from Grant Morrison's run. So Boom Boom gets involved with Boom Boom of all people. And Boom Boom in this run is portrayed more like her next wave character than her X-Force character uh, or any time she's ever shown back up. So I find that pretty interesting that they went with that uh, character portrayal of her. There are some other key characters that show up later on, like Amara shows up, Magma, and there's a reunion when the X-Men, or rather New Mutants, come back from space. The other thing that you've probably noticed as I'm flipping through these pages here is that there are two artists. Back here we have Marco Faia, and then towards the front here we have the artist known as Flaviano. So there's two artists that work on this book. This book right here retails for $19.99 and it has 208 pages. And it's always good to see these characters that I've loved since the New Mutants and then characters from Generation X share the same book. That was one of the reasons why I really enjoyed this book towards the beginning and I thought it was going to be one of my favorites, uh, but then X-Force came around and I was just blown away by that. But anyway, this is still a really solid book and if you're expecting to see characters that you've grown in love from the days of New Mutants, X-Force, or Generation X, then look no further than this book. And there's also characters from uh, Grant Morrison's run. So that's a plus. Let's look here in the back at the covers. So you have the covers here by Rod Reyes, who is the artist on the other uh, side of the story. So the new mutants that went into space like I was talking about earlier. And covers number 9, 10, and then of course uh, we'll have some variant covers back here. Now let's keep going. And here we have Thor, the Deviant Saga. This is a pretty interesting reprint. We've seen this trade paper back before, back in 2013. Uh, this is written by Robert Rohde, and then Steven Segovia is the artist on the book. And it collects a five-issue miniseries. The book retails for $17.99 and has 114 pages in here. And the Deviant Saga is pretty interesting because it has ties to a lot of the Eternal books. And I guess they reprinted this because they're also doing the Eternals, the Thor Eternal Saga in one book. And they wanted to show what a modern, I don't want to say it's a retelling, but it is a follow-up to that series, even though it's only five issues long. And even though, for the most part, during this five-issue run, Thor is getting his butt whooped. So it reintroduces a lot of, uh, of the Eternals. 
uh, from that classic run. So you have characters like Carcass and Ransack and Warlord Crow and uh, Fastos. That's it. Oh, and uh, uh, Vraco. That's the other guy. I have a hard time remembering those characters' names. Still waiting on the Eternals Omnibus for those that are asking. As soon as that comes in, I'll be doing an overview of it. But this is what the artwork looks like. It's phenomenal. It's great. But not a lot. I remember reading this and I remember thinking not a lot happens through this uh, five-issue miniseries. Um, it ties into the Deviant storyline that was going on around the whole Marvel Universe at the time. But a few years later, because while everybody else had dealt with it, including characters from X-Force or the Avengers, they decided to make it into a five-issue miniseries. But like I mentioned earlier, it's so they could tie it into that Eternals storyline because this is around the time when the Eternals were coming back Neil Gaiman was writing the story and then eventually the uh, Kaufman brothers ended up writing it but this is yeah Thor the Deviant Saga all five issues are collected in here and let's see if there's anything extra in the back I don't think they were doing variants back then but we'll see absolutely nothing in the back again $17.99 and has 114 pages all right, let's talk about this gorgeous book right here. This is Giant Size X-Man, Volume 1, by Jonathan Hickman. Jonathan Hickman writes every story in here. And there's a collection of five different stories in here. Kicking it off with Giant Size X-Man, Jean Grey, and Emma Frost, which has been collected for those keeping tabs in the Dawn of X, Volume 9 trade paperback. But it is collected here. So this is really one ongoing storyline, one big mystery happening through these issues. So it all kicks off with this giant size Jean Grey and Emma Frost. And for the most part, it's a silent issue. I've talked about this before uh, when I did an overview of the Dawn of X Volume 9. It's gorgeous. You have Russell Donnerman on artwork. And then we move the mystery on over to giant size X-Men Nightcrawler, which features the characters of Magic, Doug Locke and I Boy, and drawn by the phenomenal and legendary Alan Davis. So the mystery here, there, um, well, I can't even talk about what the mystery is, but it continues into each of the giant size. And I love that first issue. That first issue was Russell Dodderman's artwork, and he also ends up uh, wrapping up the run too. So this then continues into the Magneto giant size issue. This features Emma Frost as well, and Namor. Now, this is drawn by Ramon Perez. That's the artist on this. So this is a pretty interesting take on Magneto and what he's been doing during his time there in Krakoa. But the one that stole the show for me is this one here, drawn by Rod Reyes. And that is Phantom X. Holy crap, I was not expecting... Like, Phantom X has been one of those characters that Grant Morrison... You know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, quit trying to make Phantom X happen, Grant Morrison. And then he would show up in pages of Uncanny X-Force, uh, Astonishing X-Men. But I don't know, I never really enjoyed the character. Just because he's just drowning in mystery. And the mystery was really not explained throughout the pages of Grant Morrison. And I always thought Grant Morrison's the only one that could tell a backup story featuring this character. Damn, was the story good. This is probably one of my favorite stories I read this year in 2020. But this is the Phantom X giant size story. And it's got beautiful artwork by Rod Reyes, who teamed up with Jonathan Hickman on New Mutants. And then it all ends with Giant Size Storm. And it's good to see my girl M show up in this. Penance. And actually do some action in here. There she is. Of course, Doug Log and Phantom X and other characters show up. Now, let's look at some of these variants. I say that like I know. I'm not sure if there are any variants. Uh, the book, by the way, has 184 pages. Retails for $19.99. Get a closer look at the covers. So, there are some variants. Man, that is pretty. I like that they're full page. And that's Jen Bartel for sure. Okay, for all you spine watchers, here you go. Here's what all the spines look like together. You can pause and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. Let's keep going. I know some of my trade waiters have been really waiting for this right here. And this is the Age of Apocalypse Volume 1 Alpha. This is a new series of trade paperbacks. It's a new printing. Uh, so this right here collects 
Uncanny X-Men 320 and 321, X-Men 40 and 41, Cable number 20, and then X-Men Alpha. Generation Next number 1, Astonishing X-Men 1, Gambit and the Externals, Weapon X, Factor X, X-Man, Excalibur, Amazing X-Men, and X-Men Age of Apocalypse, the Ashkin edition. So what does all that mean? It has this Legion Quest storyline without the issue of X-Factor 107 where Legion wakes up. And it has the beginning and the first issue of every single Age of Apocalypse story. With the exception of the X-Universe but that was a big one shot. I'm not sure how that will be collected. This here has 408 pages and retails for $34.99. And it is a new printing. So in case you don't know what the Age of Apocalypse is, I'm pretty sure most of you do. It is an alternate reality where mutants have won. Well, Apocalypse has won and humans have lost. And now it's up to a small little team of rebels to take down Apocalypse. And yes, these rebels are, have, are all familiar to us here in the 616 universe but they look a lot different. There's different relationships here, and it's all caused by Legion going back in time. And one of the things that I always point out whenever I do an overview of this, or maybe I haven't, maybe it's just in my head when I point it out, is the huge differences in the artwork of, this is Roger Cruz. I think he's a Brazilian artist. And that man was fast. I mean, he's still fast. He's still drawing comics. He's not dead, but he could mimic this Jim Lee style, which obviously is what he's doing right here. This is uh, Uncanny X-Men 320. And you can tell he borrows heavily from Jim Lee's artwork, including his panel layouts and facial expressions. Right? Then, a month later, he is drawing Age of Apocalypse Alpha. That's crazy. And his art style looks so much more cartoony. I thought when I first read this, when it was coming out, that it was Joe... Um, Joe Mad that drew it. But no, he's just mimicking Joe Mad's style. Just like that. Within a month's time. And, I mean, this is a uh, oversized issue. It's got a couple fill-in pages by Steve Epting, I believe. But still, that's that's crazy to me. Uh, the scans, by the way, the files, it looks like the same as the uh, uh, Age of Apocalypse Omnibus. However, they're a little darker tone in this. The Age of Apocalypse Omnibus, I just did a little... Uh, look through just to make sure the files were the same um it looks a little bit lighter and i guess a little more cleaned up in a way but again 408 pages retails for 34 dollars 99 let's see if there's anything extra all right we have the ashcan stuff back here and what i meant to say earlier because i get lost in my thoughts sometimes just rambling but is that each of these titles like wolverine was canceled cable was canceled and wolverine for four months became weapon x cable became x-man X-Force became Gambit and the Externals, and so on. So the extras you have back here is the actual uh, Age of Apocalypse Ashcan edition. Here's that cover by Joe Mad, And then X-Fax. Oh, I love these promotional ads right here. This is Alex Ross and then Bill Sienkiewicz. And then some uncolored pages here. Let's keep going. Captain Marvel, Volume 4, Accused. So this I've seen... In solicits, it states that it collects issues 17 through 21, but it doesn't. This collects issues 18 through 21, and it has, I don't know if it's the whole issue, but it has Empire Volume, or issue number two in here. So, because of this title and some of the internal artwork I'm going to show, I do have to talk a little bit about spoilers. So, just in case, spoilers. If you don't care about hearing about this book, then you can just skip on to Incredible Hulk. I'll put the timestamps in the description of the video. But if you want to know just a little bit about this, I have to do have to talk about spoilers. All right, so let's go on. Volume 4. Why is she holding Ronan the Accuser's hammer? Accused. All right. So during the event of Death of the Inhumans, Ronan the Accuser is no longer the Accuser. I'll let you find out why whenever you pick up the Donny Cates Omnibus Volume 1, the Cosmic Omnibus. But through a series of events, he is no longer the Accuser, so now the Kree don't have an Accuser. Yet. Earlier through Carol Danvers' book, this, this is written by Kelly Thompson, by the way. It is drawn by Francesco Mana and Corey Smith. We are introduced to a character named L'Oreal, and I swear, every time I say that, it sounds like a makeup product, but it's not. It's her sister, or her half-sister. So, 
I'll let you find out exactly why, how they're related and what exactly their relationship really is. But the main thing is that she plays a big part in this. So this does take place, I'm surprised they didn't call this Empire, honestly, because this does take place during the Empire event where the Katadi are fighting the Kree and the Skrull. And since Carol has a huge backstory with the Kree, she plays an important role here. So does she get to keep that hammer? I don't know. I'll let you figure that out uh, by reading the book, but it does change a lot of the things in here. And I now I understand why they have Empire issue two. And I can't spoil that, but I've done an overview of that trade paperback a little bit. Let's look in the back here for some extras. So in this collection, on the opposite side of the issue covers, the, the standard edition covers, there are some variants as well. So these aren't all the variants, but here's a variant by Chris Bacalo and Jenny Frizen. And then I love the Heroes at Home idea. So Marvel's putting out a little book later on. I hope I get a preview copy of it. It's kind of a cute little stocking stuffer idea. Now, last but certainly not least, Incredible Hulk, Volume 14, Going Gray. So, this is one of my picks for the month as far as uh, trades not to be missed or collected editions not to be missed. And the reason I said that is because a long time ago, Marvel started publishing these books called Visionaries. And they were creator-centric books. Like you had a Marvel Visionaries, Chris Claremont, Marvel Visionaries, Steve Ditko. And we had an Incredible Hulk Visionaries, John Byrne, as well as Incredible Hulk Visionaries, uh, Peter David. But the John Byrne book came out years ago. It was never really reprinted. It went out of print. But all of that is now collected in, in this epic collection. So this has issues 314 through 330 and then annual 14 and 15, as well as material from the Marvel Fanfare 29, which is the John Byrne storyline. But honestly, the John Byrne story is okay, but the artwork is just, to me, phenomenal, especially when Byrne is, himself is drawing it, right? You also have Sal Buscema stepping in as a backup artist, but when the man himself, when John Byrne just, oh, loved it. I love this time of John Byrne's artwork. Uh, this is before he transitioned over to his new style, which he used over in his own book, Next Men, and of course, when he returned to the pages of Doom Patrol. But this is what the, his art style looked like back then, and it's just so full of detail. And then, like I mentioned earlier in other videos, you can see where Todd McFarlane borrowed a lot of his style from. You can see where Del Keown, both artists that went on to do Hulk, borrowed some of his art style. I mean, these are faces that Del would use later on in his art. But John, I mean, he he was the man, and he still is. It, you know, his art's a little different now, not for me, but this is the stuff that I love. Let me show you this Marvel Fanfare book, which is kind of his, yeah, here we go, his last hurrah at Hulk before we got this other team writing the book. Just look at the amount of detail in the storyline. Yes, each page is a big splash page. And it's beautifully drawn, written by J uh, John Byrne. Now we get into this transition period where John Byrne leaves and we have Peter David as the new scribe, but he doesn't take over completely. We have the Al Milgram issues right here. So if you remember, I said that this collects issues 314 to 330. And if you have The Incredible Hulk by Peter David Omnibus, that collects issues 328 uh, and then skips issues 329 and 330. So those are the missing issues that are in here. So if you're a reader and like collected editions, this is the epic for you to fill in those missing gaps. Because those issues weren't written by Peter David, they were written by Al Milgram, and it kind of starts wrapping up Al Milgram's story. But we do get the very first issue here of Peter David, and that is 328. This one right here that was collected in the Omnibus with artwork by Duane Turner. Now this particular epic collection Retails for $39.99 and has 512 pages. Let's look here in the back for some extras. So you have little extras here from the assistant editor month that they had at Marvel. The interview with John Byrne. And then um, some pages here of original artwork. And then this is the Hulk Visionaries I was talking about John Byrne trade paperback. And that, as they say, is that. Now, you can purchase these books from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. 
Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. Beginning Thanksgiving morning, visit their bargain bin for Black Friday deals up to 90% off cover price. New items will be added throughout the day and the rest of the holiday season. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and the page count of each of these trades. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you're picking up which ones you're excited to get. If you're waiting on any of these to be collected in omnibus format or in oversized hardcover format, I would love to know all those comments down below. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Redbubble and on Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel. And thank you to our existing patrons. More importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.